be careful not to create too many middle management roles. This is really common in small business, right? As you grow, you create these roles to manage people. If you've got one or two SEOs, you do not need an SEO lead, right? If you have two web developers, you don't need a web dev manager, okay? If you have three active projects on the go, you don't need a project manager. So be careful of creating middle management roles because middle management roles in a small agency don't equate to more revenue and don't actually free you up. They actually suck your time as an agency owner and they don't relate to more revenue. So it's a lose-lose. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second very special episode of the Agency Hour this week in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and in your earbuds as a podcast. If you are listening to this as a podcast, you should really come and join the Digital Mavericks Facebook group because you may not know this podcast is actually a live stream. That's right. It is a live stream in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and it's video. I'm on camera right now. Hello. And we share our screen and we do all sorts of amazing things. And of course, if you're just listening to this as a podcast, you're only getting half the experience. So come over to facebook.com, search for the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and join in the fun. Now, I've been a little bit caught on the hop because I've just got off a coaching call this morning uh, with our Mavericks Club members. And we have what's called a velocity call for our Mav Mavericks Club members where we help them uh, get unstuck and keep them moving in the right direction. We have a particular framework that we follow for those calls. And on the call this morning, we were celebrating because one of our Mavericks had a baby a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it's his first, well, his, his wife actually had the baby, uh, but it's their first. They had a little girl named Lily. And what I'm super excited about is that when this particular Maverick uh, who shall remain nameless because I respect our client's privacy. Uh, he said to me, well, I really need to get my act together because we have a baby coming in May. And at the moment I'm working, you know, till 11 o'clock every night. I'm working some weekends. My wife is kind of freaking out going, you know, how am I going to, uh, you know, how am I going to be able to, uh, support her and help out with the baby and you know and uh, so the first thing we did was we helped him get a care someone to look after all his care plans because he was spending about 30 hours a month doing his own care plans right it's crazy so that was one of the things that we did and then we helped him uh, hone in on his niche he serves course creators and coaches, successful coaches online. He has a particular criteria. He won't work with coaches who are just starting out and have no revenue and no audience, right? He's got a very particular criteria. So he's grown revenue, just had his best month ever, by the way. Had a $50,000 month, I believe, which is just mind-blowing. And his team are now running the business. He took two weeks off when they had their baby. He's just coming back to work now. And he's like, it's you know, I'm not working nights. I'm not working weekends. He was doing... He'd worked with another agency coach, and I won't tell you who it is, but he had worked with another agency coach in the past who had encouraged him and in fact taught him to do up to five free discovery calls before closing the deal. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, five free discovery calls before closing the deal. I said to him, well, let's fix that because that's unnecessary. We'll get you closing off two calls. Uh, the first is just a very quick 15-minute triage call to make sure you're a good fit to work with someone. And then the second call is really the discovery call, and you'll close off the discovery call, which he has done. So he's freed up so much time. He's closing deals faster. He's grown his team, had the baby, and uh, happiness all around. Now, we often talk about revenue, and we often talk about numbers in the business as a way of measuring the success that our clients have. I can tell you that... As far as I'm concerned, this is the most meaningful feedback we get as a coaching company when we hear how the work that we have done with our clients has actually impacted their life. It's not just about the money in the bank. 
So uh, we were on that call and I was very excited to hear that because uh, I knew that I was going live here in the group straight after that call. But it just proved to me again that the only way to get your life back is to build a team of some description. And that's what we're doing here all week this week. Let me know in the chat uh, if you are watching this in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Let me know in the chat where you are from. What country are you from? Uh, Paul Sokol is here from the USA. Now, Paul, I believe, is that the same Paul Sokol that was my infusion soft ninja years years ago? Are you the same Paul Sokol? Rob Lilly is here from Toronto in Canada. Facebook user is here from New Zealand. That's a common name these days, isn't it? Facebook user. All these crazy parents naming their children Facebook user. Um, of course, if you click the link near this video and give StreamYard permission to know who you are, we'll be able to bring your name and your face up on the screen. Daniel Hancock is here from New Zealand. David Murren is here from good old Radelaide. David's from my neck of the woods. And yes, that is Paul Sokol, who was our Infusionsoft ninja all those years ago. Awesome. Glad to have you here. So yesterday, you might remember, we walked through a framework on why we believe you should hire your first or next team member. And we walked through the five F's framework. If you haven't seen that episode of the Agency Hour, you should definitely go and check it out. It will be in the Facebook group. Uh, it uh, is included in the Facebook group and it's also on the podcast. So if you just look at the Agency Mavericks, po the Agency Hour podcast by Agency Mavericks, you'll be able to listen in to it or you can watch the replay here in the Facebook group. And we walk through the five F's of uh, your life, family, friends, fitness, faith or fulfillment, finances. And then we added one, thanks to my wife, whose motto is fun, fun, number one. So we have the five F's plus one. <laughs> and we asked you to give yourself a rating out of five stars in each of those categories of your life, family, friends, fitness, faith, or fulfillment, if you're not a person of faith, which I'm not. So for me, it's fulfillment. It's about, you know, donating, working, volunteering at a local charity, all that kind of stuff that makes you feel good about who you are as a human being. And fun. I'll run through them again. Family. How do you feel about your family and the relationships with your family on a scale of one to five? Your friends, your circle of friends. How do you feel about your circle of friends on a scale of one to five? How are they serving you in your life? Your fitness, your overall well-being, physical and mental health and emotional health. How is that in your life on a scale of one to five? Your faith or your fulfillment, how is that on a scale of one to five? And your finances on a scale of one to five. And then finally, fun. How much fun are you having on a scale of one to five? And we shared all of that in the comments. And then we future projected ourselves 90 days into the future and said, what do we want that number to look like in 90 days? All right, there we go. Thank you, Paul's taking notes here. Thank you, Paul. Welcome to the committee secretary, Paul Sokol here, who is taking minutes. <laughs> Family, friends, fitness, faith, fulfillment, finance is fun. You're a legend, brother. Thank you. And then how do you want those numbers to look in 90 days time? On a scale of one to five, family, friends, fitness, faith, fulfillment, finances, and fun. And obviously there is a gap between where you are now with those areas of your life and where you want them to be. And it might just be one or two areas of your life that you want to improve. And I argued that the way to do that is to free up some of your time so that you can focus on those parts of your life. And the way to do that is to hire your first or next team member, right? And uh, we had a great conversation about that yesterday. Today, we are going to walk you through a proprietary piece of uh, intellectual property that we have built here at uh, Agency Mavericks, courtesy of Pete Crispy Butter Perry, one of the coaches here at Agency Mavericks. He built a thing called the Org Chart Builder. And I'm going to walk you through it today. And I would like you to make notes. So I hope you've got your Sharpies and your Post-it notes ready. And we're going to make some notes about your Org Chart so that you can kind of design what your Org Chart needs to look like in 12 months' time and start to think about the next role that you should hire. Let me know in the comments, if you already know the next role that you need to hire, by the way, hello to Helen Wakefield, who is here from Sunny Gunny. Is that, where is Gunny? Is that uh, Gunny? What is that um, an abbreviation for, Helen? Let me know in the chat. What's that an abbreviation for? By the way, if you're multitasking, come back to me. Come back to me if you're multitasking. Come on, get out of those 
marketing automation sequences that you're building, Paul. Come back to me. Focus here. <laughs> what's the, what's the um, what is Gunny short for, Helen Wakefield? Brent Wilson is also here from Calgary in Canada. Um, so we're going to walk you through the org chart builder and we're going to help you identify the role that you need to hire next. If you already know in the comments, as I said, if you already know the next role you need to hire, let me know in the comments if you already know the next role that you need to hire. And then tomorrow, we're going to walk you through what we call the job scorecard, courtesy of Jeff Smart and the fantastic work that he has done with the top grading recruitment uh, system. I won't bore you with the details there, but we're going to walk you through the job scorecard as opposed to the job description. The job scorecard's been a game changer for us. This is the one document that you build for each role in your business. Uh, you hire against a job scorecard and you review existing team members against a job scorecard. Right? That's coming up tomorrow. And then Friday, my time, because I'm in Australia, that's right, I'm in the future. They call me future man. <clears throat> they don't really, but I like to believe they do. Uh, on Friday, I'm uh, going to walk you through the entire Team Accelerator Blueprint, which is all of the, it's basically a step-by-step -step process for making sure that you hire the right person and put them in the right seat and get them working on the right stuff at the right time. We have been doing done-for-you recruitment for our Mavericks Club members for the last 12 months. We have built an amazing system in place to hire people and we are now making that process and that system available to people who are not in Mavericks Club, right? So if you just want the system itself and you want to go and recruit your own people and hire people, that's great, but you need a process, you need a system. So we're making that system available. And I'm going to give you details about that on Friday where it's a, a brand new training that we're releasing on Friday. I'm going to walk you through the entire process, the Team Accelerator Blueprint on Friday, and then let you know how you can get access to it and uh, so that we can hold your hand every step of the way and, and train you through it. Helen Wakefield says she's multitasking today, uh, sweeping the floor and doing the laundry while listening. Well, there we go. Facebook user wants to hire a video editor and another Facebook user wants to hire a VA slash social media person. Rob Lilly wants to hire a project manager. Paul Sokol wants to hire the marketing part of the business, social content creator. There we go. Oh, and of course, Helen says that Gunny is short for Gunnadar which I believe is uh, New South Wales. All right, I'm going to share my screen here. And what I'm about to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? What I'm about to share with you is a playbook directly out of Mavericks Club, which is our $25,000 a year mastermind program. And I'm taking one of those playbooks directly out of Mavericks Club, and I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to share my screen. So if any Mavericks are watching, I'm sorry. Please don't be mad at me. This has previously only been available to Mavericks Club members, but I'm going to share my screen with you and show you. And this is called the recruitment system, the Mavericks recruitment system. It is a playbook that comes from a part of our model. We have a model called the agency GPS model where we help you grow your authority, package your IP and scale your impact. This, ladies and gentlemen, is straight out of the scale impact part of the agency GPS model. And what I'm about to show you here is just one section in the recruitment system playbook. I'm not going to show you the entire playbook, frankly, because it would confuse you. And also, we're going to walk you through the entire playbook in the Team Accelerator Blueprint. We're going to show you how to use it uh, to make sure that you hire the right people at the right time and get them working on the right stuff and that they're in the right seat. So what I'm going to show you now is just a few pages of this playbook, and it is the Org Chart Builder. So for those that don't know, an org chart is basically a visual representation of all of the people that are in your organization and what they do, all of the roles in your organization and how they fit together and who they report to, right? It's called an organization chart. It's a hierarchical diagram or chart that shows the various roles or positions in the business and who is in these roles, right? It also shows who reports to who and you can either have a top-down kind of structure, or you could have a flat structure. Uh, in a flat structure, an org chart would be a long document because no one, there really is no management. Everyone just kind of does their thing and reports to the CEO. But it's still important to know who's responsible for which part of the business, okay? Now, what we're looking at developing here is what Pete calls a forward-facing org chart, which is one that shows where the gaps are 
Because when, as you're growing, you will be occupying multiple seats in the org chart. Typically speaking, when you first start out, you are the salesperson, you are the developer, you are the bookkeeper, you are the accounts receivable, uh, you are the project manager, and you are the cleaner, right? As you grow, you need to separate some of those roles and bring in specialists who are really good at filling some of those roles. And that's what we're going to walk you through how to do that right now. So without further ado, here's the first exercise for you in your org chart builder is to list out all and what you're looking at on the screen here. For those of you who are listening to this as a podcast, as I said, you should really come and join the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. But what you're looking at on the screen here is just a a sheet of paper with three columns on it and some instructions. And the three columns just gives you some space. I mean, you don't even need to use this playbook. You could just do this on your iPhone with Apple Notes, which by the way, is my go-to productivity app and to-do list manager. I have ditched everything. I've ditched now, the team still uses Asana. I have ditched everything. I just use notes on my iPhone. That is my to-do list manager. Right? Um, so you could just use that. You could use whatever you want. You could, If you're in a cafe, you could use the back of a napkin and write this down. List out all of the tasks that you and your team, if you if you have a team at the moment, currently do on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. And here are some ideas. Here are some of the things that you want to include. You want to include any activities around business development, that is marketing, sales, customer service, or anything that you do in terms of delivering products or services to your clients. So if you, for example, if you check your Facebook ad campaigns and your Google ad campaigns for your own business every day, and you also check your clients' ad campaigns every day, you want to write that down checking ad campaigns, checking conversion rates, checking analytics. If you run care plans for clients, you want to just write down all of the things that need to happen for a care plan, backups, security, updating WordPress, updating plugins, right? Um, Visual uh, checking of updates, uh, sending backups offsite, right? might just be log in to WP Remote and push three buttons to back up everyone's site. Whatever you do, write it down. Um, If you are in the business of, uh, if you're doing sales and you've got a sales process, if you've been through our world and you've been through Sales Accelerator and you have your sales process set up, then you would have some time allocated each day to do some outreach and to manage your pipeline. You might have triage calls and strategy calls that you need to run in your calendar right? Uh, If you have monthly check-ins with clients, what do they look like? Every month we call each client, we have a scheduled time each client to talk with, scheduled time each month to talk with our clients and here is the framework for those calls. You could just, you know what I would do? I would just, I usually just document this stuff in a Google Doc, right? And uh, then link off to framework. So I go, every month we have a check-in call with our clients uh, and then I have a link and that links off to the framework for that check-in call. So you click on the link and it opens up another Google Doc and says, hey, when you jump on a call with a client, just ask these questions. And it's usually something around, you know, what have your wins been or what's working well? What lessons have we learned? What's not working well? What are you working on right now? What's the goal? What's the objective? What do you need my help with? Uh, and then a action uh, step. Who's going to do what by when? When are we meeting next, right? So you just have that in a separate Google Doc and you have one Google Doc with all of the tasks that you do and you link off to the frameworks for all the other stuff, right? So let's keep it lean. Let's not get bogged down in the software or the app we're going to use. We're not building out our documentation here. We're just brainstorming tasks, okay? So let me know in the chat here. Let me know in the chat. Uh, Maybe just let me know one task that you wanna write down that you're currently doing that you don't want to be doing. By the way, the purpose of this exercise is to write down all of the tasks that you and your team do on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. And I would categorize them. Okay, daily we do this, weekly we do this, monthly we do this. Keep it lean, just do it in a Google Doc, okay? But just so I know this is working, let me know in the chat here, one task that you're currently doing as an agency owner that you don't want to do anymore. Rob Lilly says, quality control. Yes, I hear you, brother. Quality control. Let me know in the chat. One task that you're doing that you don't want to do anymore, okay? Okay, now that we've got our 
tasks written out, and this might take you some time, but stay with me here. I'm going to walk you through the, the, the rest of this exercise. Now that you've got your tasks written out, this is, by the way, I know this is a little boring, ladies and gentlemen, but I'll tell you a secret, okay? A secret of successful business owners is being able to do the boring work without getting bored, okay? I call it doing the dishes. When you go camping, we love going camping with other families who have kids the same age. When you go camping, you generally we generally camp on unpowered sites. So we have to walk over to the block to have a shower and, you know, access electricity. If you want to dry your hair or whatever, right? Uh, or charge your Tesla, right? Uh, <laughs> it's a true story then at some point when you go camping, someone has to pick up a big plastic bucket of all the dirty dishes, take it over to the block and wash the dishes. And it's boring, but someone has to do it. So what we generally do is we do it in teams. We go, right, who cooked tonight? You guys cooked. Okay, I'm gonna, who's on the dishes team? I'm going to do the dishes. You boys coming? Yes, great, let's go. We go and wash the dishes and we talk shit while we're washing the dishes and we entertain each other and tell each other bad dad jokes. We make it fun, right? It's got to be done. So do the boring work. And find a way to do it without getting bored. Okay, back to the worksheet. Oh, look at that. Max is right on it, isn't he? So once you've written out all of your tasks, your next job, Paul Sokol says, boring work leads to excellence. Yes, it does. And loading ads is something that he doesn't want to do anymore. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Once you've written out all the tasks, your job now is to categorize these tasks into the different parts of your business. Marketing, and when I think about the different parts of your business, there's no right or wrong way to do this, right? The, the three big categories in any business are sales and marketing, operations, and finance. But you can break those down into more granular departments. So, you, so sales and marketing might be two different departments, right? Uh, operations might include team and processes, right? Uh, finances might be uh, accounts, so accounts receivable, accounts payable, and might also be your accountant or a CFO. So you might have smaller departments within those three categories. The way I think about it is I look at my client's journey through my business. So look at your client's journey and say, where does your client's journey start? It starts with marketing. They're either referred to you by someone, which is a form of marketing, or they've seen some of your content, which is a form of marketing, or they've responded to an ad, which is a form of marketing. Right? They put their hand up and they qualify themselves as a, as a lead. It then goes from marketing to sales. Once we've converted them into a customer, then goes into delivery. We need to deliver on the promise. And that includes some people and some processes and also maybe some productization. And then they pay or hopefully they pay up front. And then we have to reconcile the money. So then it goes into bookkeeping, accounting, CFO work, right? So some of the departments might be marketing, sales, financial, project management, web dev, you might have a design department, copywriting, SEO, okay? Categorize your tasks into those big chunky categories. And again, there's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. There's, you just got to get it done. Don't let perfection be the enemy of good here, all right? Just get it done. Come up with some, you know, probably no more than six or seven categories of tasks, you might just have a bunch of general admin tasks. But be careful because some of those general admin tasks might actually be marketing tasks, right? So going through a list of leads and qualifying them, well, that's actually a sales quality task. So that might go out to an outsourced sales development rep, for example, who just goes through a whole list of leads and qualifies them based on a criteria. It's not an admin task, it's really a sales task. So just categorize them the best that you can and put them into some buckets, if you like, right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the task categories and think about the roles that can be assigned responsibility for each category. And let's work through an example here. If you do SEO for clients, if you perform search engine optimization tasks and you've come up with a category called SEO, then you might have a role called SEO lead or you might just have a role called seo depending on how big you are and how many clients you've got if you've just got 
you know, 15 or 20 clients that you're doing SEO for, then you've just got an SEO. You just need an SEO to come in and help you. If you've got 150 clients, you might need five SEOs and an SEO team leader. Consider where categories may need to be split into separate roles. We've spoken about that, right? Or conversely, where categories might be grouped together within one role. I'm reading straight off the worksheet here that Pete Perry put together. So for those of you listening to the podcast, if it sounds like I'm reading, it's because I am. Be careful not to create too many middle management roles. This is really common in small business, right? As you grow, you create these roles to manage people. If you've got one or two SEOs, you do not need an SEO lead, right? If you have two web developers, you don't need a web dev manager, okay? If you have three active projects on the go, you don't need a project manager. So be careful of creating middle management roles because middle management roles in a small agency don't equate to more revenue and don't actually free you up. They actually suck your time as an agency owner and they don't relate to more revenue. So it's a lose-lose. So what you want to do is you want to create roles for (laughs) louder for those in the back. (laughs) I love it, Paul. I love it. Um, (laughs) The... Right, don't create too many middle management roles, okay? Louder for those in the back. Uh, What you want to do is you want to create roles for specialists to come in and get the job done and deliver outcomes, which we're going to talk about tomorrow in the job scorecard training. And you manage everyone initially as the agency owner, and then as you grow and it becomes too much for you to manage, then you hire people to manage those teams. You hire team leaders, okay? Think ahead. As the business owner, you may be doing the books, managing projects, and doing sales, performing sales tasks. But those are all separate roles, and eventually they'll need to be handed over. And you'll just be the shareholder and the agency owner. Now, here's here's what I see happen a lot. There's, There's two things. One is the agency owner is typically... The last role that you that you usually occupy on the org chart is sales, maybe strategy, and also CEO, agency owner, shareholder, owner of the place, big boss, big man on campus, boss mama, right? So boss, sales, and strategy. The mistake I see a lot of agency owners is thinking that no one else can do the sales and strategy for them. You are not a unicorn. Okay, I said it yesterday, I'll say it again. You are not a unicorn. First of all, unicorns do not exist. But if they did, I promise you, you are not one of them. All right? And you are doing your you are doing yourself, your clients and your family and your team and everyone around you a massive disservice by trying to do sales and strategy and be the boss. Eventually, you need to hand over one or two of those roles. Okay? If you can figure out strategy for clients, so can someone else. They just need to have the experience and the training. If you can close clients through a sales process, so can someone else. They just need experience and maybe a bit of training. Now, having said that, if you love doing strategy, we have plenty of people in Mavericks Club who love strategy and they don't want to get out of it. They want to be the business owner and they want to do strategy. Right? They've just gotten rid of sales. Someone else is doing sales. And uh, they're just doing strategy. So they onboard a client. They have a strategy meeting with them. They design the strategy. Then the team goes and executes. And they're doing that because they enjoy it. And that's totally fine. Just don't stay in a role and convince yourself you love it when the truth is you just don't think anyone else can do it as good as you. That's a mistake. Okay? Okay. Right, <clears throat> so having said that, your job now is to take the roles that you have designed and to sketch out an org chart for your business. Thank you, Joanna Shero says, good point. Thank you, Joanna. Where are you from, Joanna? Where are you listening in from? Your job now is to sketch out an org chart. I'll give you an, an example of a couple of tools that we use at the, um, in a minute and I'll show you an example of an org chart in one of those tools. When done properly, you should have 
the CEO or the agency owner or director or general manager, whatever you want to call yourself at the top, right? And it might not have your name in that role. You might hire a general manager to run your agency. Very common. Joanna's from Kentucky in the USA, by the way. Uh, then you have this tree-like structure underneath that shows the various roles in your business, how they are related, and who answers to who. I'll show you an example of this in a moment. Make sure you have a box for each role that you may someday wish to have in your business. So if this is a future-facing org chart, it's not the org chart that you have now, right? which you know, usually looks like a scrambled egg when you're small and it's just you and a couple of contractors helping you out. It's the org chart that you want to have in 12 months' time or three years' time. It's the org chart that you want to build in your agency where you say, I'm really happy with the way that my agency is performing. My team are doing an amazing job. Here are the roles. Here's how they interact. Here's how they relate to each other. And here's who they report to. Uh Add the names of your current team into those roles. And if any staff member is performing multiple roles, then you put their names in multiple boxes. So if your VA is also doing social media management for clients, then they're in two roles. They're in the VA, the admin assistant role, and they're in the social media management role. If you are doing sales strategy and CEO, then you put your name in three boxes. And, the, and I did this years ago. I did this exercise probably eight years ago. Right? And I have built myself out, I've replaced myself in all but two roles in my company. And I'm about to replace myself in an, another one of those roles, which I can't talk about until the 1st of July. It's a very, very exciting announcement that we have coming on the 1st of July. Yes. And so I can't even tell you what roles I'm in at the moment. I'm in two roles, really, in this business. And one of them I'm about to replace myself in because I'm not the best person for the job. Uh, so I have systematically gone through this and replaced myself in the org chart with people who are better at it than me. Now let's talk about the tools that you might use to help you do this quicker and to give you some visual candy to play with, some eye candy to play with. One tool is Organimi. I'm going to share a different screen here. I'm going to stop sharing that screen and I'm going to share Safari. One tool is Organimi. It's spelled O-R-G-A-N-I-M-I. -I. It's kind of like a play on the origami word, but it's for organizations. Organimi is uh, one tool that you can use. But the tool that I love is whimsical.com. I love this tool. Whimsical is like a digital whiteboard for your business. It's fantastic. And it actually has some templates in their community that you can access for free. You sign up for a Whimsical account, you can access some of their community templates. Uh, these are templates that other people have built and just shared with the community because, you know, they're lovely people. And there are some org chart templates that you can use in Whimsical to get you started. So what we're looking at on the screen now is an example of an org chart, right? Uh, you can see here we've just got a bunch of boxes with the word roll written in them and they're different colors. And then we have arrows connecting those boxes to each other to show you who reports to who and how those roles interact. And there's another example here in Whimsical where you can actually add people's photos into, the, into their chart, right? And how, which is great because you can share this with the team and say, oh, I saw that person on a Zoom call the other day. That's what they do. Excellent. Now I know who they are, what they do, and who they report to. I'm going to go and talk to their boss about them because I don't like them. Or I'm going to give them praise. I'm going to send them kudos. I'm kidding, of course. I'm just playing with you. So here are a couple of templates. Whimsical.com. By the way, I don't get paid to recommend Whimsical. I should because I recommend it a lot. But there's no affiliate link here. Whimsical.com. Sign up for a Whimsical account and then grab the org chart template from their community template library. And you've got an org chart here ready to go. You can just start populating. It's going to save you some time, right? I would suggest that you scratch this out with pen and paper first before you do it in Whimsical. And remember, the point of this exercise is to design the org chart that you want to have in 12 months' time, not the org chart you have now. Okay? And 
the idea, once you've done this, is that you look at the org chart and you say, right, I'm currently sitting in five seats in this org chart. I'm currently occupying five roles. The role, the question you've got to ask is, if I replaced myself in one of these roles, which role is going to give me the biggest ROI or help me grow the business the fastest? And the question I ask is, what am I terrible at? Or what do I just really not enjoy doing? The hardest role for me to let go of was sales because I'm pretty good at it and I love it. Turns out I probably discounted a bit too much. I probably offered people discounts when I shouldn't have. Right? And, and then eventually my team said, stop, you idiot. You're discounting. Get out. And we hired good salespeople who didn't discount. And I was like, oh, how do you do that? Because <laughs> I'm just too nice to people. Right? I'm not sure. Go on. Fine. Come in. Um, so that's why I replaced myself. That was the hardest role to let go of. And, and also I did eventually, I just got tired of it because I was doing it so much and it's quite exhausting. So I eventually replaced myself in that role. Um, there were some other roles that were super easy to let go of. Development was one of them. I'm not very good at it. I don't enjoy it. I find it painful. Marketing was also hard to let go of. But when I let go of the chief marketing role and we hired Tisu, who's our fractional CMO. That's right. He's a fractional CMO. Uh, he's based in Canada. He's like 23 years old and he's a gun. And he started running marketing campaigns. I'm like, holy shit, that's amazing. How do you do that? He's like, that's exactly what I would have done. And so that was, I didn't want to let go of that role because I love it so much, but it turns out he's better at it than me. So I've constantly elevated myself up the org chart. I now operate in two roles, kind of right up the top of the org chart. And as I said, on the 1st of July, I'm going to replace myself in one of those roles. It's very, very exciting. There's a big announcement coming on the 1st of July, which I think is going to rock our audience. I think it's going to be a very shocking announcement. Dun, dun, dun. I uh, wish I should have that sound effect on the sound pad. Um, so it's been a systematic approach. It hasn't been easy, right? We've mishired people. We've hired the wrong people. It's cost us money. It's sent us sideways. It's sent us backwards. But things are pretty good at the moment. And so this is just one component of our entire recruitment process, what we call Team Accelerator Blueprint, this org chart, getting this org chart penned out so that you can look at it and say, right, I need to hire a care plan developer to take over care plans. I had a call with the Mavericks this morning. Uh, two Mavericks were saying, one of them, as I mentioned, just had a baby. When I met this guy, he was doing, he was spending about 30 hours a month doing care plans, right? We got him a care plan developer. He doesn't do that anymore. We've helped him build out his team. He just had a baby. It's taking two weeks off. Everything's cool. The team is running the business. Just had their best month ever. $50,000 a month. Amazing transformation. Another Maverick was telling us that they're hiring a care plan developer because their project manager is currently doing all the care plan stuff. So they need a care plan developer to take care of that so the project manager can focus on actually managing builds and managing clients, right? Not doing care plan stuff. So... Think about the role that you or some of your team members are if, when they're occupying multiple seats. Think about the next role that you can bring on, which is going to give you the biggest bang for buck or help you move faster or free up time so that you can close more sales because revenue and profit is what you need to grow your team and your team is what you need to free you up. Okay? Okay. All right, I, I think this has been useful for some people. Let me know in the chat, what's been the biggest aha moment or the most valuable part of this uh, so far? There's one other um, sheet on the uh, job scorecard playbook, which I won't share with you because I've basically just kind of said it, right? Which position would have the biggest impact on your revenue, your client satisfaction? What part of the business needs the most attention? Uh, which position would have the biggest impact on your freedom, your control, your sanity? What roles are currently missing and would be an immediate improvement on what you deliver or how you deliver it to your clients? So, you know, client success manager might be that role. What role would knock over the most dominoes if replaced or filled? There we go. Love it. And then the idea is to 
just write out who you want to hire by when. Put some dates on it. Right? Put some dates. You just write out. We call it a recruitment schedule. We have it mapped out and click up. And we go, well, well, by this date, we're going to hire that person. By this date, we're going to hire that person. By this date, we're going to hire this role. Now, it changes over time, but at least we have a bit of a plan in place that we can look at down the track and say, yes, that's what's coming. We need to get ready because we're going to hire that person. We need to prepare this because we need to fix that documentation because we're going to hire that person. Um, Joanna Shero says, yes, this is very valuable. I love when you said you think you are good at this, but there are still, there's still someone better. You are not a unicorn. That's right. You are not a unicorn. Rob Lilly said, it's been great to see all this visually instead of just in my head. Excellent. That's the advantage of being in the, in the group here. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please come and join the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and uh, come and check out the visuals. It makes a lot of sense. All right. I know this is called the agency hour, but today it's the agency 40 minutes. Right, I don't want to keep any more of your time. This is a special uh, bonus training episode of the Agency Hour podcast, so I don't feel too bad that it's only 40 minutes long. Tomorrow, we are going to talk about the job scorecard. The idea is, okay, work with me, just stay with me here and come along on this journey with me. Yesterday, we talked about why you should be hiring your first or next team member. Today, we've talked about your org chart and we've given you some guidance and training on how to put together your future-facing org chart so you can identify the next role that you want to hire. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the job scorecard and we're going to help you develop a job scorecard for this role that you are going to hire. And then Friday, we're going to walk you through the entire Team Accelerator Blueprint, all of the bits and pieces that you need to hire the right people at the right time, get them in the right seat and get them working on the right stuff. And then we'll also tell you how you can get access to our brand new training, the Team Accelerator Blueprint, which is a new training that uh, opens up Friday. Joanna, yes, this is a training here in the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. So the replay will always be here in the Facebook group forever. You can come and watch this whenever you like. It's a totally free training that you can watch whenever you like. Uh, and again, if you're listening to this in a podcast, you can come into the Digital Mavericks Facebook group and watch this training whenever you like, okay? All right, this has been super fun. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Uh, we love this community. We love serving you guys. We love helping you guys. Uh, come back tomorrow the same time. Actually, tomorrow is an hour earlier. I lied. Tomorrow is an hour earlier. Tomorrow is 8 o'clock Melbourne time, Thursday morning. So it's an hour earlier than today. And we're going to walk you through the job scorecard and we're going to help you design a job scorecard for this new role that you're going to hire uh, and to keep you moving in the right direction and get you to hire that first or next team member. All right, this has been super fun. My name's Troy Dean. You are listening to the Agency Hour from Agency Mavericks. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. Bye for now.